what do astronaut training facilities and carnivals have in common? People walking around in weird suits, yes, but also centrifuges. You hop in, get spun right around like a record, and feel like another human is sitting on your chest. Maybe you get a little nauseated. Maybe you step out when it's over and fall over because your sense of balance got all messed up. But the centrifuges astronauts get to ride are way more intense than anything you'll find between a roller coaster and an overpriced snack stand. And we're here to talk about the most notorious. It's called the Johnsville Centrifuge, and it gave early NASA astronauts the ride of their lives. Because for half a century, this thing was the most powerful centrifuge in the world. Centrifuge rides are just one part of your standard astronaut training regimen, and NASA has used them basically from the get-go. Even in the early years at NASA, scientists were beginning to understand the effects that extreme accelerations had on the human body. Now, to drop a bit of jargon on you, those accelerations are often referred to by the term G-forces, because from your own internal reference point, accelerating can appear to have the same effect as the force of gravity. One G represents an acceleration equal to what you experience just walking around on the surface of the Earth due to the pull of gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. So for any higher number of Gs, you feel like you weigh more than you normally do. For example, during a space shuttle launch, astronauts were subjected to a maximum of three Gs. So at some point along their journey into orbit, a 60 kilogram astronaut would feel like they weighed 180 kilograms. Meanwhile, a driver at the Texas Motor Speedway can experience as much as five Gs on the turns, and a roller coaster that really whips you around can top out at around six Gs for very brief periods. That's similar to what NASA's astronauts in the Mercury and Gemini programs experienced getting into Earth orbit. It's also similar to what astronauts are expected to experience while landing in a Russian Soyuz spacecraft. But there was one time in 2008 where the occupants were subject to over eight Gs. One astronaut said she experienced severe trouble breathing during that time, and another was hospitalized for excruciating neck and back pain. And I know what you're thinking, I'm not an astronaut yet. What can I handle? Well, you. Under normal situations, the average human can survive about 12 Gs for very brief amounts of time. And during that time, you feel like you have 11 other Us sitting on your chest, which, safe to say, isn't particularly pleasurable. But a sustained high G situation is pretty hard on any body, even one belonging to an astronaut in tip-top shape. Or should I say, the military test pilot in tip-top shape. Because the Johnsville centrifuge wasn't built to train astronauts. Picture it. It's the 1940s, and the US military realized it probably shouldn't launch its pilots in a bunch of newfangled super fast planes without some ground based testing first. And thus, in 1947, construction started on a training centrifuge at the Johnsville Naval Air Development Center in Warminster, Pennsylvania. And by the time NASA had picked a bunch of military test pilots for its first astronaut class, it had a giant centrifuge to stick them into. Not all at once, of course, though I suppose you could try shoving in the whole of Mercury 7 if you really wanted to. Depending on the era, the centrifuge's gondola was either a three meter by two meter spheroid or a proper three meter wide sphere. And it was stuck on the end of a 15 meter arm powered by a 4,000 horsepower electric engine. Thanks to all that HP, the centrifuge would whip its rider up to a maximum 40 Gs in as little as seven seconds, just in case that was ever gonna be necessary. Spoiler alert. It wasn't. And for decades, the pilots and astronauts that got their G-force training inside this thing also served as guinea pigs. For the record, this was before Congress passed legislation that regulated human experimentation, although they tested on animals too. And sadly, several live monkeys, chimpanzees, and even dogs met their end from the extreme accelerations they faced in the Johnsville centrifuge. But no humans were ever seriously hurt there, despite one of the potential side effects being spontaneous death, because your heart is trying so hard to get blood to the rest of your body, it just gives out. Meanwhile, less permanent side effects include temporary loss of vision and a phenomenon called G-lock, where you black out because blood can't reach your brain. You can also get a measles-like rash as blood leaks through the capillaries in your skin. And of course, there's the standard struggle to breathe, because after you exhale and your lungs lose all that air, the rest of your chest crumples in around them and you can't inhale again. But all that guinea piggery led to scientists figuring out the right breathing techniques and preparatory measures that protect people, including the pressurized 
its G suit, which both helps you breathe and keeps most of your blood where it needs to be. So we owe a lot to the pilots and astronauts that subjected themselves to what Time Magazine once described as a torture chamber. But they aren't the only ones who went for some extreme rides, because no matter what field of science you're dealing with, you're gonna find a scientist who wants to be a guinea pig too. Take, for instance, the Iron Maiden experiment from 1958, designed by civilian psychologist R. Flanagan Gray. He had noticed that fish don't seem to be affected by accelerations, so he hypothesized that if you could submerge a human in a bunch of water, they'd better withstand the stresses of a high G situation. So Dr. Gray built a roughly human-shaped aluminum capsule, stuck it onto the centrifuge's arm, filled it with water, got inside, and cranked up the centrifuge basically as high as it would go. After about 25 seconds, he hit just over 31 Gs, and he stayed there for five whole seconds. It's a record that stands to this very day. Now, reports vary on exactly what physical side effects Gray experienced, but he was basically fine. The actual paper that got published referred to a slight frontal sinus pain during the run and a few flecks of blood in his handkerchief the following morning. He also reported abdominal pain once the centrifuge hit 10 Gs that he could manage by tightening the appropriate muscles. But while Gray was going for max Gs, another researcher was going for max time. His name was Carl Clark. He was a medical zoologist by training, and he wanted to test what would happen if you just hung out in higher than normal Gs for super for extended periods of time. Why would humans want to do that? Well, instead of coasting at a constant velocity to the moon or Mars, astronauts could get there a bit faster if they kept their foot on the proverbial accelerator. So Clark brought his Lazy Boy recliner from home and hung out inside the Johnsville centrifuge gondola at a cool two Gs for a full 24 hours. He reportedly cooked, ate, napped, made medical observations on himself, wrote, listened to the radio, and generally carried out activities of daily life. And the only real symptom he noted was a feeling of fatigue, which if you ask me is probably a combination of feeling twice his natural weight the whole time and being stuck inside a gondola with nothing important to do. After the Apollo program, NASA eventually started training astronauts in centrifuges a bit closer to home, like the Brooks Centrifuge in San Antonio, Texas. It's capable of accelerating you up to 30 Gs, but your average astronaut will only experience eight max while training for an emergency re-entry. Meanwhile, the Navy abandoned its Johnsville facility in 1996. The centrifuge itself was decommissioned in 2004. But parts of it are still there, and you can do more than just visit them. You can rent the building for parties. So if you live in the greater Philly area, consider having your prime wedding, or bat mitzvah at what was once hailed as the world's most powerful centrifuge. But if you don't have that kind of money, you can get your hands on a shrunken down version of the Johnsville centrifuge from our merch store. It's a pin and it even spins. That's hours of entertainment right there. This limited edition pin is available for order now, so get yours by heading over to dftba.com slash scishow. Thanks for watching.